Kohama, February 27th, a five-day long training program for master trainers on early childhood care and education, aka, and foundational literacy and numeracy, FLN, got underway at Mount Tabor Retreat Center, Kohama today. The training is being organized by Samagra Siksha Nagaland, in collaboration with the State Council of Educational Research and Training, Nagaland. Vantingo Sapo, Director of School Education addressed the gathering as a special guest while a keynote address was delivered by Veketulu Vehi, Senior Lecturer and Head of Ekesel SCERT and the Deputy Mission Director of Samagra Siksha Nagaland Kelika Kenye, who also chaired the introductory session, gave a brief background on the purpose of conducting the training program. Welcome all the participants and invitees to this inaugural session uh, today. This five days uh, uh, training program is being organized by Samagra Shiksha, School Education and SCRT for the ECC and FLN master, uh, District Master Trainers. So these five days we look forward to have very intensive uh, sessions here at Mount Tabor Retreat Center and thereafter tentatively in the month of March from 11 to about the 16th March the same training is planned to be replicated in the district and block level for the teachers. So there is our plan. preparing or about to launch the ECC curriculum in all the government schools from 2024 academic session. What an exciting it is, what an excitement it is. We're all thrilled, we're all excited to look forward that many, many good things happen to our children, that we build a strong foundation from here on. And also a very rare occasion. Today, I feel that is a red letter day for the department, especially the Department of School Education, in collaborating collaboration with SCRT and Samagra we could bring out a beautiful curriculum on ECC and this has been a marvelous achievement of this department. We are very grateful and I'm very grateful to SCRT team for coming up with a wonderful curriculum. <coughs> In the context of our state, the uncommodity workers, we cannot uh, leave this responsibility of nurturing the young minds to the Antamoti workers. That was a big challenge that we had. So even today that still proceeds, but then uh, I, I believe with the coming of the city bills and officers from the district level and subdivisional level, you have been you know, with us today, we're very, very thankful to all of you. And with your support, I think this uh, you know, curriculum or whatever, that has been uh, brought out as a paradigm shift in the education system can be put into you know the system of learning among the young minds. As we are all aware that ECCE is a holistic development where both social, mental and physical fitness of the child has to be you know inculcated ingrained in the child when in they are in the formative age. That is from the birth till class, till the age of eight. And we will be discussing many things about the curriculum, how you are going to take forward. You, most of you are now the master trainers, going to be the master trainers. But here I want to say a, a word of caution to all of you. The curriculum that is being brought now by the SCRT alone may not suffice all of us. 
for the finish. The curriculum is one thing, but you have to be the master of that curriculum. Apart from that, you have to have an empathy while taking this forward. As a responsible citizens, as a responsible teachers, how we you are going to make this program successful? Because you are going to study the you know behavior of the child, which made the curriculum more than the curriculum. You are going to study the behavior of the child, the emotional behavior of the child, and the development of the brain of the child at a very uh, later stage, at a very infant stage. So friends, we have to take this very seriously because this is a this is a program where the, there is a paradigm shift in our education system, where there is no such system in earlier education. It's a new for all of us. It's a new challenge for all of us. So how you are going to take forward? It's not that it has to be recorded and Nagaland has to be in the front line that we have done something great in the paper. But I want to see that our child learn something. I want to see that our child becomes someone, a good citizen, through this, through this curriculum, through this EEC and FLM. I want to see that the child thinks critically, analytically, as the, as the rich plus three. So that is what we wanted. Education system is changing a lot in our, in our country with this new NEP continuum. And this is one area of concern for all of us. So like three days, four days, or five days of in-house training, I think this is not enough at all. So we have to take forward even more training for the teachers so that this can be transacted properly in the classroom. Because many parents may send their children to us. Many parents will not know what the child is about, what the child is learning, and especially the government schools. Many children, the parent, proper parenting is not there. So you are going to have a lot of challenges. So how you are going to take forward and educate our teachers whom you are, you are going to be the master trainers. So there should be no room of doubt as you impart this training. That is what I wanted to tell you. No room of doubt. You should, you should clear all your doubts within these five days. So that the proper transaction of knowledge, proper transaction of learning text in the classroom. See, friends, I just want to say a few things here. In our Nagatan bags, children never raise questions. Okay. A few days back before the exam, we had a we had a meeting in a, you know one high secondary school. You know, the Prime Minister's speech we attended. After that, we had an interaction with children of class 10, class 12 students. We ask them so many questions. We ask them to raise some questions. No one raised questions. That is a scenario of our state. Our children, be it in a government school or a private school, they never raise questions. Something is wrong in our education system. That is what we feel. I think we, as a parents, I think we don't give them room to speak in front of the elders. I think we don't give them right a freedom to speak in front of the you know, uh, parents, when we discuss, I think that's how, I think, child, somewhere, they don't open up. Our children, they don't open up. They don't ask questions. Do you notice, teachers? Do you notice? If you go to outside Nagaland, children will start all kinds of questions to us, to the teachers. And we have attended so many other seminars, workshops in other states. Children started raising questions out of curiosity. Okay, they wanted to know more many things, but our children, our other children, they don't raise any questions. So this is a big question mark for all of us. Let us inculcate knowledge, learning, and give them enough space for the children to 
this question. I think we should do that from the formative stage, from the early stage. Then only our children can speak of what is in their mind. They never speak of it. I think we are giving them only, feeding them only bookish knowledge. That is, I think, that is one factor. Family is one factor. The society is one factor. Again, the schooling system, the school, I think we are not giving them enough space. That is why this has to be looked into with all seriousness. We, if we wanted to have, uh, you know, create a responsible citizen, proper nurturing and proper caring is prerequisite in our education sector. Teachers, you are the architect of the nations. So, as an architect of the nations, our responsibility has gone beyond the horizon. As I have said earlier, curriculum is there, but you have to tailor it and make the cloth stitch in line with what the child needs. You have to tailor it. It's not that the curriculum has to go every each and every detail of what you have to do in the classroom. So your transaction as a teacher, that is very, very important. And how you translate knowledge and learning needs to be looked into with all seriousness. We need to build a strong foundation. And a strong foundation, to build a strong foundation lies on us. What kind of foundation? Are we going to build? Are you going to build a foundation that lasts learning lifelong? Or are you going to build a foundation that is going to go up to the level of class 9 and 10? It depends on the teachers. It depends on all of us. In Nagaland, we all know we don't have industries, we don't have factories, but we have a big human resources. And these human resources, if the government, if all of us can that well, these resources can be the big resources for the industries of our state. And this is only my dream that one day Nagaland can uh, you know stand ahead of many other states in this writing of this next generation where our generation children will be going beyond the boundaries of Nagaland, beyond the boundaries of our nation, and they will be bringing much more development to us. This is the only hope. And I think you all will agree with me that there is no other industries other than the development of these human resources. And we have enough talented youth with us. So let us make use of this talented youth so that they can be the strong foundation of our state. They can be the leader, a good leader, a good citizen of our state and of our nation. So friends, I just want to remind all of you that you are like the CCTV. We kept, captured every activities of the movement of the citizens coming to the office. You will be acting like a CCTV in the school. You are going to captivate the emotional, the physical, and all the needs of the child. So let's hope that all of us, as a, as a partner, will make a difference in the learning and making this education system more vibrant and robust. With you, with few of these words, I can do. Thank you so much. I am very privileged to be standing here before you to deliver this keynote address on behalf of the Department of SCRT, School Education, Samadra, and especially all the uh, resource person team who will be facilitating uh, this five days training program. I know that all of you have come here with a rich um, knowledge base, which with rich uh, field experiences, and coming here, um, I will not say.
say that you are here to learn something new, but we are going to learn, collaborate, and learn from each other. And as the chairman had rightly pointed out, that this is to learn more about the foundational stage education. Now, if we look at foundational stage education and what is early years, and if we rewind, go back even like about 100 years ago, I don't know when it's about 100 years, but you know, almost a century ago, even our state not then, even before we got our statehood, you know, the kind of education that was prevalent in the, there was a kind of private education that was prevalent in the state. And we also know that Christian missionaries that came to Nagaland also had uh, so much, you know, they have contributed so much towards education in terms of how to read alphabets or to count or to sing songs, you know, those were some kind of uh, uh, primary education that was existing in our state. Also, if we look at our social cultural context, if we look at the cultural beliefs that we have, if we look at the cultural values that we have, we find that even though children don't go to school, such kind of values and beliefs are greatly influencing our child rearing practices. So what is a child rearing practice? Like you see what values they impart to your children, and these are nothing but you know some kind of early years education happening at home. Now coming to our context as people who are working in education department, we see that primary schools exist, you know, everywhere and pre-primary grades. I mean this is something that has been with our schools since even before the inception of statehood. So in order to have an organized structure, the Department of SCRT also has developed curriculum syllabus which have been used and are still being used in most in almost all the government schools. And there's going to be a shift in this uh, approach towards curriculum which we will be discussing in the coming five days. So as part of the curriculum development team, I would like to just give you a brief, you know, like why we thought about having this new curriculum. So as I was said earlier, you know the values, the beliefs that we have, we 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 try to um, foster those in our children. So there was a family that a kind of curriculum that contextualizes. You know, uh, that is a contextualized cur curriculum, that is integrated curriculum should be developed, which we can, you know, like uh, 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 use it for our schools. So, in order to bring about this contextualized curriculum, it is not uh, possible for a few people to come up with this curriculum. So, there is a very highly intensive collaborative process with the help of teachers, with the help of teacher educators, even uh, one or two uh, personnel even from the social welfare department. I'm not sure whether social welfare is aware of that, but uh, uh, an officer like the CTPO, an anonymity worker, was also very much part of this uh, development of this training manual. So that is how we brought out this curriculum. Now, uh, we will be having sessions on what curriculum is and you know, the principles, the goals, and all this, uh, dealing with those in our uh, later sessions. But what I want to say is, here in this five days training program, uh, we will be dealing with what is the importance of um, ECCE, the concept, the importance, the principles, the goals, the learning outcomes connected with this curriculum, how to align these experiences, um, the daily experiences with assessment, you know, a lot of those activities will be happening so that in this five days training program, you will have at least, a, you know, you will get the hang of it, like you will know what this curriculum is and you will not take this curriculum just for the sake of, you know, we got a few books and this is what we are going to transact, but I want all of you, like us, to own the curriculum because all of us have written this curriculum. Just take it that this is not written by a, a few people, but this is a curriculum that we have all written and we need to give the best to our children. Now, um, I also feel that, you know, like in this five days training, um, you know what, uh, you know, a lot of uh, intensive brainstorming sessions also will take place. 
and I uh, hope that all of us will change um, our, should I say, mindset, you know, like our, our thinking process, our, our, you know, like our understanding about um, this uh, new shift in the uh, education arena so that uh, you know, when in computers, we you know, if things are not working, what do we do? You know, we reboot it, isn't that like reboot it, or we try to you know switch it off and switch it on so that it works well. So I think all of us, like in this five days, I hope that uh, we will rethink and reboot our mindset so that uh, you know, like change will come to our schools. So this. Uh, Five days training is to learn from each other, and it is also to like excite all of you. You know, is to galvanize your mindset so that um, we are able to bring change in early childhood education in Nanda. Thank you very much.